Köszönjük szépen, elnök úr. There has a slight, been a slight change of program. Um, my name is Christopher Vasco, and I'm uh, the co-chair of SGAC. Uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished delegates, um, it is my pleasure to present to you the Space Generation Congress 2013 perspectives from university students and young professionals in the space sector. Today I will briefly cover what the Space Generation Advisory Council actually is, and I will introduce you to the Space Generation Congress. Then I have the honor to present you to the outcome of our discussions of this year and present you the recommendations of this Congress. So some basic facts of SJC. Let me begin um, with a full name. It's the Space Generation Advisory Council in support of the United Nations Program on Space Applications, or short, SJC. Um, we are a non-profit organization that represents 18 to 35-year-olds in an international space policy uh, area at the United Nations, at agencies, in industry, and in academia. SGAC was conceived in the wake of the third Unispas conference in 1999. SGAC has had a permanent observa observer status in the UN COPOS since 2001 and has been an active member of the UN Economic and Social Council since 2003. Since its inception, SGAC has grown into a volunteer network of about 4,000 members in over 90 countries. And now to describe one of our annual conferences, the Space Generation Congress. The Space Generation Congress this year was held in Beijing, in China, last September in conjunction with the International Astronautical Congress. 116 selected delegates from 38 different countries across six continents came together in an intense workshop to discuss space policy issues. The Congress is a three days long set of discussions, workshops, and talks by space professionals. Amongst these 116 delegates, a total of 25 participants from 13 countries were given full scholarships provided by SJC. Our attendees were both students and young professionals, representing a very wide spectrum of technical and non-technical space backgrounds. Every year we choose a set of interesting topics to discuss. This year we chose five, industry, agency, society, exploration and earth observation. Our delegates were split into five teams, each tasked to answer specific questions on these topics. In order to be on top of these very diverse and complex issues, the delegates of the Space Generation Congress 2013 were aided by speakers and experts from all corners of the space sector. Distinguished delegates, we are proud to report that the speakers during the Space Generation Congress 2013 in Beijing included some of the experts in their respective fields. Amongst many others, the chairman of UNCOPUS, Yasushi Orikawa, the late UNOSA director, Mazla Mokman, uh, the NASA administrator, Charles Bolden, the president of the Association of Space Explorers, Dorin Prunario, president of the IAF, Kiyoshi Higuchi, and the executive director of the Secure World Foundation, Michael Simpson. And I would like you to walk you through the recommendations of the project groups of the Space Generation Congress. The complete and detailed conclusions and recommendations are found on our web page and are free to download. Let me begin with the industry group. Its topic was entitled Space Industry in the Area of Globalization. The industry group discussed how competition and smaller budgets, uh, project budgets may benefit the appearance of small to medium sized companies, especially in developing countries. Further, they debated the role of industry in a globalized world as mediator to bridge the gap between the spacefaring nations and developing countries. The group recommended that customer focus at very early stages of development is of utmost importance to generate reliable insight into customer demand and use, as well as to involve users in product development at the earliest stage possible. Entrepreneurship should aim to explore and integrate the best practices from adjacent high-tech industries to foster innovation. Internalization, internationaliz internationalization and inter industrial partnership to efficiently invest in an international public-private partnership, identify interfaces, form standards, and to solve other technical issues that an individual government or a company could not address alone. In addition, to take full advantage of new, low-cost, small-scale technologies to build international partnerships. And finally, to adapt knowledge management models to actual employment patterns by exploring new software tools for efficient knowledge management. 
to foster a close work environment between professionals at all levels of experience and to prioritize the development and long-term training of young professionals in project management strategy. Next, I would like to highlight the recommendations of the agency working group entitled Space Communications in Our Daily Life. This group focused on discussing the lack of awareness in society of the benefits of space communications. Their challenge was to explore ways to raise that awareness for a multicultural and device society, society and aiming at a wide age group. And finally, to develop a concise and clear outreach strategy. The agency group returned with the following recommendations. To develop an educational, dynamic and integrated video, image and game application campaign in order to target and engage stakeholders. To achieve this goal, the most successful means of integrating this campaign would be by utilizing a neutral coordinating organization, such as SGAC, when facilitating stakeholder outreach in the work group members' respective home countries. Further, the group recommended collaboration with existing outreach campaigns, such as NASA's International Space Apps Challenge and the UK's Catapult Future Cities as strategies for funding. The outreach strategy should be divided into several short, medium, and long-term efforts. And this would provide an interesting chance of return on investment for stakeholders. The Society Working Group addressed near-Earth objects impact on society. This project group was supported by the Secure World Foundation. The group focused the group focused their discussions on how to define an effective communication plan to prepare governments and public alike to efficiently respond to the potentially hazardous near-Earth object. They discussed on how to implement a coordinated program of education targeting the public, the policymakers, students, and the media. Further, they aimed to identify criteria for communicators to be used to deliver neo-threat information effectively and avoiding misinformation. Finally, the group discussed how to, assess, uh, how to access near research data and real-time information. The recommendations are as follows. An effective communication plan should foresee a long, medium, and short-term action to cope with the near threat at different stages as it evolves. Long-term actions target the general public to raise awareness and foster scientific education. It should be implemented by local governments in accordance to guidelines provided by IOWAN. Organizations like SGAC should support outreach activities and translate materials in different languages. Medium-term actions will require decision makers to develop contingency plans in, re in the remote case of a highly probable impact. Short-term actions will directly target general public and governments using the preparation and training learned with medium-long-term communication strategies in order to mitigate the consequences of threats. To produce an effective educational plan, the group discussed to implement a multi-level strategy addressing the population in different ways with, the, with correct and factual information. A media tra training with the support of universities, agencies, and institutes has to be implemented in order to produce neo-threats related TV series, movies, advertisements, and other similar media. This has to be done with the guarantee of factual correctness of the material presented. Accredited organizations and international groups would aid policymakers in responding to the neo threat and its possible consequences. In addition, schools, museums, planetariums, and virtual forums should play an important role in the education of students and the general public. Where the general public could not access this kind of activities, the group recommended to get NGOs involved in contributing to the process through community gatherings and other tools already in place for other kinds of emergencies. Me. Um, due to differences between nations and their available infrastructure, every nation should identify possible communica communicators and implement an impact risk management within its own emergency service units. Emergency responders should be educated on specific threats on, of asteroid impacts. This group recognized the importance of the Impact Disaster Planning Advisory Group, IPAGE, functioning under the SAMPAGE to coordinate international activities and to support national efforts. In the initial phases, national emergency service units should contact and receive information from a UN ID page. 
In the event of a short-term threat, the emergency service unit would start an awareness campaign to inform the public of the threat and possible mitigation measures. As a long-term response, IA1 should act as a central body for any information and international communications between countries. Our exploration group was entitled Exploitation of Space Resources, Legal and Political Implications. The exploration group examined the emerging space resources industry and the political, legal, and social challenges that it faces in our society. Further, they discussed the uncertainties of the international space law treaties, such as the Outer Space Treaty, Liability Convention, and the Moon Treaty, potentially preventing the progression and development of this industry. The group further discussed what is socially acceptable in terms of space mining, specifically with consideration to protecting the environment and their unique heritage. They recommended the following. Due to the ambiguities in property rights of celestial bodies, an interpretation of terms in the Outer Space Treaty to permit the utilization of space resources is required. An impartial international body should be formed to address scientific, cultural, and environmental concerns involved with space mining. To implement a regulatory framework to protect the common heritage of humankind. The liability for space operations should be amended by the General Assembly as regulation currently falls to the launching state to allocate risks between the state and the private entities. States should acknowledge limitations in the liability convention and solve both on the national and international level. Space mining has the opportunity to greatly further human progress through economic stimulation and both technological and scientific advancement. The group from Lou believes that through appropriate regulation and national and international input, the benefits of space mining can be experienced while avoiding the possible detriments that it could entail. Finally, I would like to present the Earth Observation Groups entitled Earth Observation for Sustainable Development. This group discussed the challenges and possible solutions of Earth observation for sustainable development in developing countries, including economic growth and poverty reduction. They identified main challenges to be data access and utilization, lack of awareness, lack of technical capacity and of coordination, and finally, lack of political will. The group recommended to promote data access and utilization in form of a data sharing framework, to expand current frameworks for disaster emergency response to other phases, make similar international frameworks for other areas, to create data sharing mechanisms based on contribution from member countries, including developing countries. To encourage private sector involvement in international initiatives and to fund a study for the benefits of sharing data through research. Further, more investment on study and sharing of best policy practices on the use of Earth observation data for sustainable development in developing country is needed. Uh, is needed. Excuse me. Um, Increase user awareness on data sets and its benefits. To increase space communities' awareness on user needs. To build technical capacity. Form templates for STM education. Educate the educators. Brain drain. Share job creation techniques and promote technical exchanges with the condition skills that are used domestically. And finally, to avoid, avoid duplicate efforts. Domestically, clarify the roles and the responsibilities amongst agencies in an individual country, and internationally. Identify and share international efforts through workshops, web portals, and the like. Mr. Chairman and distinguished delegates, what you have seen here in form of these findings and recommendations is that the next generation of space sector leaders is active, knowledgeable, and very eager to participate in space policy discussions. Through SGAC and our Space Generation Congress, we are giving them the opportunity to do exactly that. The Space Generation Advisory Council would like to thank them uh, for their contribution to one of the most successful Space Generation Congresses in our history. In particular, we would like to thank our supporters and our partners, such as NASA, the Secure World Foundation, Lockheed Martin, and the rest of the sponsors and supporters in these slides. We would not be, we would not be able 
to voice the ideas and visions of so many passionate young volunteers without our sponsors and partners, and we are grateful for their experience, advice, and their collaboration. And with that, I would like to thank you, Mr. Chairman, and you, distinguished delegates, for your time this afternoon. Last but not least, I would like to encourage all nation states present to have the university students and young professionals to join us at this year's 13th Annual Space Generation Congress, which will be held in Toronto, Canada, next September. Thank you very much.